that out, we're going to estimate P with an interval. Okay, so it's called a confidence interval specifically. Confidence interval is the most common way of referring to that. A confidence interval estimate. And um, so we're going to need to start with the point estimate, the best point estimate, which is always the sample proportion, which is the P with the hat over it. Okay, so we start with that, then add and subtract margin of error, which we call ME for short, or sometimes just E. Right, so we'll call it ME since that's what they're using in this problem. Okay, and now we need to see what we were given to use for this. We were given the sample size, so sample size, symbol for sample size is N, is 99, 60.6% .6 successes, so that's your P hat, okay? There's your estimated proportion. This is your sample proportion, okay? The sample that was used had 60.6% .6 successes. So we're gonna call that P hat, P, hat and um, we're going to express it as a decimal because mathematically that's how per percentages should be expressed when using them in formulas otherwise you could run into problems so 0 0.606 is the p hat so that means that q hat which is your percent of non-successes or failures unfavorable events would be one minus p hat. Okay, so 60.6 .6 were successes and the rest were not successful. And then we had a confidence level of 98%. Okay, so the confidence level is 0.98. That means that the significance level which is alpha, okay, take a moment to insert that symbol here, I'm going to pause, okay, so I just went to insert symbols, and then I'm choosing the Greek letter alpha to represent my significance level, and that is always 1 minus the confidence level. Okay. And we're going to be using that to find our critical value because we're using probability um, to help us determine where we need to, how many standard deviations are going to be included in our margin of error. So with um, the standard normal distribution, the critical value, which we're going to need as part of the formula, it's going to be a positive critical value, you know, when we have two because confidence intervals are always two-tailed and everything's symmetric. So alpha is split up on each side into two pieces. So as you can see, our significance level is 0 0.02. That means that 0 0.01 is on each side here. And those are areas under the curve. And then in the middle was the 0.98, the confidence level. All right, so if you can just imagine p hat in the middle, and we're going to add and subtract a margin of error to create our interval boundaries. And the margin of error basically is like figuring out how many standard deviations to go down and up to reach a certain level of confidence. And, and that confidence is the, it, re it represents how confident we are that our interval estimate will contain the true population proportion p. All right, so we're going to come down and use um, alpha half. Alpha half is 0 0.01. I'm just
just steal it from here. Don't know where that happened. Hold on, divide by two. That is the point zero two divided by divided in half. Okay, so that's my left area here in this tail. And what I want is the z score, the critical value, which I can find using norm.inverse with an area of 0 0.01 to the left. Mean of zero and standard deviation of one since we're talking about z-scores. Um, and then the last thing is to notice that that gives me the negative version, but because I am calculating a distance called the margin of error, I want it to be positive. And so I don't want to use any negative value in my margin of error calculation. So while this one on the left is negative 2.5, Three, three approximately over here is positive 2.33 and this is the one that we want to use in calculating our margin of error. So all I do is just put an absolute value function around, put the norm.inverse inside of an absolute value function or you can just change it by hand or whatever you want to do. Okay, but that's how I do that. And um, so now I'm, I'm most of the way to where I can um, calculate my margin of error. But let's open up the formula packet and make sure that we get everything down just. OK, so I just copied the section of this page here in the reference packet. It starts off with setting up the confidence interval. Finding the tail, you know, the significance level, use the confidence level and make your sketch find your confidence, your, your critical values, and now we're to the step where we're going to use our critical value. So we've already done the first um, box here. We've already done that, and now we're going on to use that information. So we're going to go 2.33. Um, that's rounded. We may or may not round it based on the instructions in the question. It says answers should be obtained without any preliminary rounding. However, the critical value may be rounded to three decimal places. Okay, so that's telling us that in general don't round anything except for the critical value. And when you round the critical value, do go ahead and round it to three decimal places. So I'm just going to use um, 2.326. Yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and change this to 2.326. That's what I'm going to be using when I calculate my critical, um, not my critical value, but my margin of error, 2.326. All right, and then we also need the SE. What does SE stand for? SE stands for standard error. Is SE, and that is your um, sigma divided by the square root of n. So we learned about that in chapter or lesson nine with the central limit theorem. Um, it was simply sigma divided by the square root of n when you're doing estimates of means. But for proportions, it's um, there's no standard deviation. So it's a little different. And that's formula is over here, right here. So your standard error that we need for this part of the problem here is found right there, the one with the P and the Q, right? So you see the Z alpha half, that was our critical value that we already figured out. And um, the E or the margin of E, ME, is going to be multiplying the Z score times the standard error. So our standard error is going to be found doing the square root of P hat, Q hat, over n. Okay, so now we have all those parts already up here. We have the n, we have the p hat, we have the p hat, we have this q hat, so we just need to calculate equals square root of p hat times q hat divided by n and 
that's what we're going to use um, as our margin of error, or excuse me, my our standard error, 0 0.04911. When we multiply those together, both the critical value and the standard error, then we get our margin of error, which is the most important thing. So the critical value, make sure it's positive, times the standard error, and that gives you your margin of error of 0.11423. All right, now that's in decimal format. But the problem um, asked for it as a percentage. Right, so that's our last step here is to take the 11.4 and multiply it times 100 to make it into a percentage so, or move your decimal place to the right two places. So now that's a percent and it says to round the final answer to one decimal place. So that's why we take this number and round it to 11.4 percent. I hope that was helpful. See you in the next 